Hello, welcome to Jessie's Craft Corner. It's been a while since I posted a video, but that doesn't mean that I haven't been recording. Whenever I get stumped on a part of a project, I bounce to a different one until I can puzzle out a solution. That said, expect several videos in the next month. Usually, I get inspired to work on a doll from something I'm currently watching or reading. My husband and I were on a Disney binge, and we ended with The Little Mermaid. I couldn't stop thinking that Flotsam and Jetsam don't get enough love, so here we are. I actually didn't realize until a few days after I started this project that it's the 30th anniversary of The Little Mermaid. Pretty cool, right? Are you bored, Skittles? Are you a bored kitty? She's like, I need you. What do you need? I need to be held. But I've held you all day. I need to be held more. And that is the story of why I am sculpting with a cat on my shoulder. <sighs> well, failure is often a side effect of trying something new. As a newbie at using Sculpey, I didn't build a good enough armature. So I built a better one out of 18 gauge wire, tinfoil, and masking tape and started over. I'm just trying to get a nice even base shape built up and defining the edge of the upper jaw. Now that I had the details for the snout, I went ahead and pre-baked the head to save my progress before moving on to the lower jaw. In retrospect, it would have been a lot easier to do the sculpting on the interior of the mouth if I had started off with two separate pieces and then joined it together later in the process. Hindsight is 2020, I guess. Adding in some extra depth and shape. I have no idea how Ace of Clay manages to get his transition so smooth. Maybe it's one of those things that only comes with lots of practice. At this point, I decided I didn't like how the tongue looked and tried to fix it. I kept trying to sculpt on the thick lower lip that the eels have, but no matter how many attempts I made, so I scrapped that detail. I realized later that this was because my own style kept creeping in, even though I was trying to make them screen accurate. More on that later. Adding a little more jaw definition and building up the base of the neck. I figured out that having the frame wires extend into the neck is crucial for stability. Rolled out a couple of eyeballs and started building up the neck folds before pre-baking. After baking, I attached the eyes with super glue and started setting them in place. Whoops, there goes an eye. Bolt up the cranium, but not too much because they aren't that smart. That said, they are on the very short list of competent Disney henchmen. Now satisfied with the head shape, I added in more neck folds. Boy, I suck at smoothing and keeping my fingerprints off my work.
and pre-bake. Here comes the new and somewhat improved tongue. Seriously, Jesse, just give it up. It's never gonna look good. The best you can do is hope that your paint job can hide how bad it is. Here's where the good stuff is, the eyebrows. For me, this is the part where the sculpt actually starts to come alive and look recognizably like Jetsum. Not accurate, but recognizable. It would appear that I decided to define the lower lip, jaw, I'm going to call it a jaw, before adding the cheeks. No lie, this was my favorite part of the sculpt, mostly because it meant that I was done. Okay, you can see how rough my initial sculpt was, so I sanded it with 120 grit. This was a pretty boring process, so I'm just going to speed it up. Now that I finally got the heads looking good, I decided to attach the bodies with magnets. I fastened them in place with Epoxy Sculpt's home improvement cousin, Plumbing Epoxy. It's pretty much exactly the same, except that it cures in about five minutes. You know, for impatient people, like me. While waiting for that to cure, I'm using a bit more to attach the magnet to the body frame. I stuck a piece of tin foil between the two parts to keep them from adhering together, and then used a bit more epoxy to mold it to the shape of the head socket so that the parts will lock together with no gaps. And taking everything out to the garage for more sanding. My office got so dusty from the previous sand that I didn't want to vacuum it all again. This isn't a lot I need to do, it's just smoothing the edges a bit. On to the bodies. I want these to be poseable, so I'm making them out of fabric, and using ribbon for the fins. I'm measuring each piece of ribbon, cutting it to shape, and melting the edges with a candle to prevent it from fraying. I experimented a bit to see if I could cut shapes out of the ribbon and still heat seal it, but it didn't really work, so I stuck with the basics. You can see I cut two of each piece to get my desired level of opacity, and then whip stitch them into place. This isn't strictly necessary, but in my experience, any chiffon type material is super slippery. For me, it's just easier to tack them in place than to try and keep it all lined up with pins. Alright, I pinned the body pieces together and ran them through the sewing machine. Now that the pieces are sewn together, I clip the, the corners and curves to get a smoother seam. My husband pointed out this fabric to me, which ended up being the only one in the entire store that was the right color. Way to go, James! Stuffing the frame in the sleeve. The tack board actually keeps the spacing between the wires correct so that the body stays mostly flat instead of turning into a tube. Realizing that I made a mistake in three, two, one. 
Let me fix this. I'll be right back. There, that's better. Time to stuff. I found with a shape this flat, I got much smoother results with the smaller pieces of fluff. Usually, I would use comb outs from yarn wefts, but I've used all of mine up. super glue to lock it all in place. As a side note, super glue really doesn't like to stick to vinyl. Finally, I get to paint the heads. Flotsam and Jetsam's eyes are mirrored, so I put three coats of white on one right eye and three coats on one left eye. Now for the magic eyes, I'm starting with a darker yellow for shading and use two to three coats. This is the point where I realized that if I have shading on the magic eye, I probably should do it on the normal eyes too. I'm using a lighter yellow for the middle of the magic eyes and touching up where I went outside the lines. I tried using special effect paint on the magic eyes to make them glow in the dark, but unfortunately, even after four coats, the glow was so dim that I couldn't see it, which was disappointing, but not unexpected. Would you like a cookie? I would love a cookie. A cookie would be divine. Uncle. I started in with black. I prefer to use black as a base under metallic paint because it makes the color darker and more aged. Depending on the effect I'm going for, a white base coat will make metallics lighter, paler, and more subtle, and a color match base coat, blue under blue, yellow under gold, gray under silver, etc., will make the color look brighter and richer. I went with a dark purple for the roof of the mouth. I'm not super fond of this particular paint because the pigment is kind of thin, so it takes a lot of layers to get even coverage. This next color for the tongue is a bit of guesswork on my part. I think it's supposed to be light purple, but it's hard to tell because every time you see Flotsam and Jetsam in the movie, they're in different lighting. Huh. They look kind of dragonish when they're painted black. Metallic paint isn't very opaque, so it usually takes a few layers to build up the color. Good news is, acrylic paint dries really fast, so the first side is, is dry by the time I finish the second side. I believe I used four layers on each head. Applying one layer of MSC, I went in with chalk pastels to add some shading and highlights to Flotsam. The navy blue wasn't giving me the look I wanted, so I switched to black with much better results.
I used some of the same white to add highlights to the forehead, eyebrows, nose, and cheekbones. I'm sure they're working better on the dark color because they're a higher quality chalk pastel than my color palette. As the last touch of shading, I used Prismacolor pencils to define the details. This is still the first layer of MSC. Going through the same shading process as I did on Flotsam, but I'm also using a dark purple to shade Jetsam's tongue. After doing a final seal with MSC, I glossed the eyes. I did two to three coats to get my preferred level of shine. In Jetsam's case, I'm not only glossing the eyes, but also the inside of the mouth. And finally, the last step, adding teeth. These are just pieces of toothpick that are painted ivory and then cut to size and glued in. I originally tried pre-baking teeth that were going to be sculpted into the head, but that ended up on the long list of failed attempts, so I did this instead. While I originally set out to sculpt my poopsies to be screen accurate, I think the movie stills I used for reference weren't the best. I picked ones with lots of expression where the facial features were exaggerated, and my scale sketch deviated even further, so by the time I finished sculpting, they were very much rendered in my style. That said, I do really like the way that they look, and I feel like they're still very recognizable as Flotsam and Jetsam, so I don't feel any need to remake them. That's all for now. I will be revisiting this project in the future to make display stands, so if you enjoyed this project, stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.